second of our three short topics is environment. So I'd like to call on Danielle Wheeler now to talk to us on what she would hope to achieve in the area of environment were she, if she were to be elected. Look, it's really hard for me as a Green to stop at two minutes on the environment, so Peter may yet get to use his bill. Um, <laughs> climate change is real and urgent. We've already locked ourselves in to two degrees of warming by 2050. We've seen a radical warming of the environment already. I'm sure all of you have noticed that we didn't really have winter, although we seem to have been bunging it on this evening on bloody freezing. Um, <laughs> All around the blossom trees are out. It's August. We haven't had a single frost down in the valley all winter. We have to act now. We can't keep banging on and pretending that we're going to find solutions and hoping that it will go away. It won't go away. God will not fix this. Crossing our fingers and expecting that Chinese might wake up and get on with it, that's not going to work. We have to show some real leadership. We may not be one of the major... Um, producers of CO2, but by God, we're, produ we're sending enough coal overseas to be a major producer of CO2, and we are the largest per capita polluter of CO2 on the planet. So we really do need to show some political leadership on this issue. The cost of not acting on climate change far outweighs the cost of acting now. The Greens have a costed plan for 90% renewable energy by 2030. That's a transition to wind, solar thermal and rooftop solar. It's not our plan. It's from an organisation called Beyond Zero Admission, Emissions. It will work. It will cover the whole country. By 2030, 90% of the power in Australia can be produced by clean, renewable power. And that last 10% is pretty easy to achieve because by the time we've switched everything else over, we're away. We're quite dismayed to see the, um, the Labor government back away from the carbon tax. The carbon tax was actually a really good piece of policy. People have been adequately compensated. Most families get about 10 bucks a week back. The average, cost, the average increase in electricity bills has been about $3. And the bulk of that hasn't been because of the carbon tax. It's been because of coals and wires. The other thing that we really must tackle, and he's going to get his bell out in a sec, is our <laughs> national parks. We urgently need trigger legislation so that the Environment Minister can act to protect national parks. There's a coal seam gas exploration licence that covers the bulk of the Macquarie electorate. It will be an unmitigated disaster. If we start pulling that gas out of the ground, we will bugger this area. We have to have legislation to stop it, and we need to have it now. We've been pushing for this legislation. Labor and the Coalition have said no. The old parties need to get out of bed with big business, with the shooters and the fishers, with big ag, they need to stand up, they need to show some leadership, and we need to make some changes. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Susan Templeman, what would you hope to achieve in the area of the environment? Like the Greens, Labor is all about the environment and, in fact, we're the ones that bring in the legislation that makes the change. You know, so we were the ones who brought in the price on carbon. That was the right thing to do. It's also the right thing to adapt to community concerns and make sure you take the community with you on it. But, you know, today Louise was just telling me there's two fires, bushfires, in the Hawkesbury today. You know, how, when did we last have a fire in August? It's not just weather. We are definitely starting to see patterns of behaviour that should put fear into everybody, just as having the Liberals in power should put fear into the heart of any environmentalist. They don't have a commitment to the environment. You only need to look at Barry O'Farrell and shooting in national parks to see where their hearts lie. So, you know, when you look at what Labor has done, you see, you see what we could continue to do. You know, signing the Kyoto Protocol, installing over a million solar panels and the recent announcement, which will come to a reality in the next term, which is the $130 million funding in the Southern Hemisphere's largest solar farm to be put in Broken Hill. We will see that built thanks to the federal funding. We've got the world's most comprehensive network of marine parks. I do not, do not want to see that taken away. 
you know, the legislation for the Murray-Darling was something that every government prior to ours had been able to achieve. That's where the commitment to environment lies with the Labor Party. It is easy being green, but in fact we're the ones that get things done on it. If you think at a local level, what do we need to do? We need to maintain and protect our environment. I worry about the talk of cutting green tape. Green tape is there to protect our environment. And all we're likely to see under the Liberals is an opening up of national parks, a loosening of controls, an invitation to businesses to exploit resources that are not replaced, able to be replaced. In terms of coal seam gas, one of the big challenges that we face, we don't know enough about it, and I'm very proud that Tony Burke, as Environment Minister, brought in legislation that required anyone wanting to explore for coal seam gas to look at the impact on water and to pass certain tests around that. So Labor will continue to deliver the sorts of sensible protection to, of the environment measures that we've been able to deliver every time we've been in office since the time that Bob Hawke stopped the damming of the Franklin. Thank you, Susan. Our third and last speaker on the subject of the environment is Louise Marcus, to whom I'd ask the question, what would you hope to achieve in the area of environment? Louise. Yes, look, um, thank you so much, Peter. Uh, some of you may or may not realise that uh, I have fought for environmental issues since I was first elected to Parliament. In fact, uh, I was able to secure in my first term, $15 million for a solar city in uh, the local council area that I was responsible for at that time. I've also secured funds uh, for the health of the Hawkesbury Nepean River system, particularly during the challenging years of drought. And while we've got plenty of rain, or have had plenty of rain now, and that river's very healthy at present, there have been seasons where the impact on, on uh, fishes and other users of the river as well as uh, the, the river bank itself was significant. Uh, as I've mentioned earlier, I fought to secure $15 million for the Greater, uh, Sydney, the Greater Western Sydney Cumberland Plain Conservation Corridor. And uh, what's significant about this is that this is double the amount that Labor have offered. Uh, and it's $7.5 million again for direct funding for the acquisition of threatened land in the corridor and to create connections between uh, Cumberland Plain woodland sections to ensure that there's corridors for flora and fauna to move and develop between. It's also $5 million for the planting of one million trees, uh, as well as $2.5 million for 15 Green Army teams. And that's of t for 10, uh, 10 young people per team. And I've already been speaking to not only council, but also local bush care groups and a number of environmental organisations uh, in the mountains in the Hawkesbury to talk about the options and how we can uh, improve how the Green Armies can best make an impact. I think what's important for the environment as well is that we do ensure that uh, renewable energies, particularly in the uh, solar, has, is encouraged and I'm certainly happy to do whatever I can to lobby on, on uh, the behalf of the people of the Blue Mountains to ensure that uh, what is important to people here about the environment is raised, particularly with my colleagues on, on our side. Uh, from my point of view, I think the generations to come are relying on us to make sure that we protect the environment. It's absolutely critical. But we must do this in a very practical way. We must do it in a way where it does make a real impact. Thank you. Thank you, Louise.